Good morning, everybody. I want to talk about Ebola preps. Well, basically, any any real pathogen. Um, at this time, um, there's no confirmed human-to-human -human transference via air. Okay, so I'm gonna state right there, but this goes for flu and everything else. So let's get into this video here. Um, let me get my notes here. And uh, let me get things set up. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Here's what we know right now, as of today, whatever the date is, about Ebola in humans. The infectious dose is one to ten aerosolized organisms are sufficient to cause infection in humans. Okay, one to ten. The incubation period is 2 to 21 days, more often 4 to 9 days. Survival outside the host organism. It says the virus can survive in liquid or dried material for a number of days. It doesn't say how many. Probably because there's a lot of factors involved. Okay. Men who recover from the virus can still spread the virus to their partner through their semen for up to seven weeks after recovery. That's men who recover, I guess. Um, so, you can wear a condom if you're a guy and you survive it. It'd be best just to avoid sexual contact for seven weeks. That way you won't infect your partner. <clears throat> now, the virus is susceptible for disinfection to it. The Ebola virus is susceptible to the sodium hypoclorite or bleach. Bleach. In this case we got powdered bleach so we make the water so it doesn't lose that potency. Um where was I? Uh disinfectant, solvent, acids. Uh, nothing we could have at home from outside. Now, to physically um, inactivate it, you moderately uh, can heat it for 30 to 60 minutes at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. You can boil for 5 minutes. You can use gamma radiation, 1.2 to 1 times 106 rads to 1.17 to 106 rads. I don't have a radioactive source to deactivate it, so we'll go with Boiling and UV radiation will deactivate. Ebola is part of a uh, type of virus called a fluorovirus, F I L O virus. You can destroy it by autoclaving, sodium hypoxylate, or bleach. A normal Ebola is 1 to 100 ratio for dilution of household bleach, of 5 point whatever, 2 bleach. So. Regular household bleach. Um, now the the actual Ebola, I guess Zaire or whatever's current, is susceptible to a two percent hyperchlorite. So I would double it. Um, you can deactivate with light, gamma radiation, heat. Uh, Marsberg is one percent sodium hypoxylate. Okay. And that's a fact. You can get all this stuff on the on the CDC's website, and you really should go there. Now, let's get into the gist of this. Let's go. See this mask <clears throat> made in China? This is probably Harbor Freight. Yeah, wash it safety. But basically, this is an N95 mask with a uh, valve on it to to help with moisture because once these things get wet they collapse in you gotta push them back out with your tongue and you're infected. N95's for airborne vectors is trash okay I don't care what anybody says well there's a lot of opinion on this and they're and they're wrong okay I'm okay with that let me explain why you absolutely need N100s. Let me, let me get one of these out here. Okay. 
Okay. That's an M100. This is a real deal. A lot sturdier, a lot thicker, a lot better seal on the back. This is good for painting and dust. This is good for the good stuff. Got the veal. It's got the mesh on to prevent it from collapsing when it gets wet. Uh, these are P100 masks on here. This won't work. Well, it might work. I'm not taking my life chance on it. But this P is for oily environments, but it's still 100. It gets 99.97%. I'll check my figures over there, but. And they clasp on, and they're a good mask, and they don't collapse. Put that back away. Uh, generally, I keep my mask wrapped in plastic because you, you don't want them getting dirty and filtering the air around them just by proximity. Basically, the few, few first outer microns of any filter is going to be filled. If you don't vacuum seal a mask, you'll destroy it. They catch the virons by the fluff in the mask. Okay, now, <clears throat> N100, particularly filtering face respirators, filter at least, at least, 99.97% bare bone particles, but they're not resistant to oil. And the N95, okay, N95, now listen carefully to this part, N95 respirator is the most common of seven types of particulate filtering face pieces respirators. They filter at least 95% of airborne particles. 95%. 5% will get through. And what do we need for infectious dose? 1 to 10 aerosolized organisms. Now let me, let me hammer that home. If a person is sick, the droplets in a single cough may contain as many as 200 million, with an M, individualized virus particles. What's 5% of 200 million? Uh-huh. So that's over 10 organisms, right? So definitely infected. Now, I'm not saying the bowl is airborne yet, because we don't know if it has or if it's mutated or whatever. But there are unknown vectors of mammal to mammal transmission via air, but not, 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 not confirmed to humans. I know they're going to say there's a lot of people uh, over there, the doctors, like a hundred I think got infected, but you know, they're in the belly of the beast. And that's really no different than a firefighter getting killed inside the fire, even though he has protective equipment, while everybody outside is okay. They're in the belly of the beast. And they're tired, and tired people make mistakes. Okay. People are most infectious as soon as the symptoms first appear, and less infectious, infectious as their immune system gets to it. Now, a viron, or virus particle, is a very, very small, 0.001, I think. Um, basically, due to, due to physics, to be airborne, it has to be 0.4 microns or, or larger. Well, you can filter that. That's not a problem. You can filter 0.4 microns. That's all you need to filter air, air, air wise. Now, you gotta think about all this stuff. You know, it's really spreading over there. Because you got people stealing bodies of the dead, doing religious ceremonies, kissing the dead is not a good idea. They do all that stuff over there right now. And ceremonies and pray over and viruses don't care what religion you are or what you think. They don't care. So, so Ebola is bad. Um, Amazon's going to make a killing around Christmas for, you know, virus-free shipping. Actually, the 1918 flu uh, pandemic was uh, one of the vectors that infected the Eskimos was the U.S. mail. Just saying. Just saying. Okay, now... I've got this set up, and I've got a little packets in a 5-gallon bucket where I just empty the packet of the 
just to the dehydrated bleach basically, the pull shot. I've got it in there. It's just there's no other buyer, no algae or anything else, so whatever. Um, I put the packets in the bucket and fill the bucket up as five gallons of household bleach. 5.25% solution. It's all math, pay what you get. Regular bleach degrades. Um, now I've heard of people take, I'm going to use this one for example, but in 100s, you can use them and you can spray them down with Lysol for N1, HN1, H, bird flu, H5N1, for the bird flu, and reuse the mask when it's set out. Also, you could do UV on it to re sanitize the mask and use them again. Your call, I don't plan to do it. Your call. Uh, hand sanitizing wipes, alcohol, peroxide, generally stuff for sanitation. Uh, this is spread through uh, body fluids. So you can pretty much figure it's like hepatitis, only a lot more susceptible. About during the week, I come in contact with about three different people's body fluids. <laughs> Gross as that sounds. That's the gym. I worry about sweat on the gym machines. If this kicks off in America, I'm not going to go in the gym anymore. I use sanitizing wipes, but still, I'm going to consider something else. I don't know, but. Sweat is one. Can you get it from a toilet seat? I don't know, but if someone has a sweaty butt, then I would think you could. Uh, it's my understanding that Ebola can be transferred by sweat, but this is what we know. The main point of this video is we don't know a lot. And um, get your gloves. Um, I've got one, I've got five mil there, the medium duty ones from Harbor Freight. That's good enough. I'm not touching bodies. If I see a body laying there that's bleeding on every orifice, I'm going the other way, fast. But the point is, an N95 mask will stop 95%. So, if you cough up Ebola on somebody, and it's airborne, an N95 will protect you from most of it, but only let, um, let's see, 200 million, so... Uh, you know, 20, 20 million viruses at you, and you only need 1 to 10 to infect a human. So, you're going to get a dose of 200 million. I mean, you can look this up if you debate what I'm saying. That's fine. You should look this up and check your facts anyway, because I might be a crazy guy. I don't know what I'm talking about. But, Ebola is very scary to me. Disease is one of the things you can't really... You can't really deal with You know, once you get it, you bring it to everybody. You don't know you have it. Um, so there's plenty of videos. Go to the CDC and the WHO website and look all that up. And, um, I don't know, I'd like to hear your comments. I can't wait to hear somebody tell me that N95 masks are better because they're cheaper. At this time, an N N100 runs you about, I don't know, I think I paid like five dollars each maybe I don't know I don't know how much they were and there's higher quality ones but I'm not doing that and I got a you know I got a rain suit so I have a I don't have a moon suit but I have a rain suit I can tape up and gloves and till myself off nobody's gonna splash a ball on me I'm not gonna touch them and I'm gonna sanitize have like bottles of alcohol and peroxide and sanitizing wipes and all kinds of stuff but you get it you get it you know your dog can bring it to you for all you know you're not gonna bring it to you do it no, she said no. So, get your facts, get it printed out, and uh, educate yourselves, everybody. All right, this is North Canada Prepper. I wish everybody the best. Have a great day. Have a really great day. Get some sunshine, get out, get moving, do all that good stuff, and please rate and subscribe. Thank you, and have a great day.